Rick, there was a MSNBC op-ed by Jared Holt who writes that these bomb scares are a natural byproduct of the MAGA playbook. Um, and I just kind of outlined a few examples of real life consequences where it is about the threat of migrants. Sure. The, these people, these, these, you know, domestic terrorists, these are people who are politically motivated. They carry out violence in the name of this sick ideology. Do you think Trump and his colleagues are even worried about the real life impact of running amok with insane lies like the ones they are spreading in Springfield? I, I'm going I'm to be very blunt. I think Trump wants someone to be killed. I think they want this violence to escalate. I think they want to then say, these migrants have caused the violence. They brought this on themselves. Look at our cities on fire because the, of these terrible people from faraway lands who happen to be dark skinned. This is a racist playbook that goes back well before Hitler. This goes well before um, you know, the, the idea that, that, that somehow people were eating cats and dogs. This story gets recycled over and over again. This story was recycled from a story that happened in Britain during the Brexit campaign when Rupert Murdoch's newspapers and media outlets were saying, oh, these Polish immigrants are eating the swans out of all the lakes. Mm. They're, eating, they're eating people's chickens. This is a lie that they love to tell. They love it more on the MAGA side right now because let's be very, very blunt. They see a group of people who they absolutely loathe in every way. They're legal immigrants. They are from Haiti. They are black and they are hardworking. They hate all of that. It blows up every one of their lives. They're not here illegally. They're not here on welfare. They're here working to make their community better. It is a disgusting and, and racist lie, of course, but the violence and the threat of violence in the minds of many MAGA types is a promise. It's something they want because then they can say, oh, well, now it's escalating. And then we'll blame the people, they will blame the victims of the violence that the MAGA people are engendering against these Haitians. They will blame it on the Haitians. It, is, it, it, is, it, it speaks very ill of their, of their moral center. The, uh... More of the same, with uh, lots of smears from the Democrats calling uh, Trump the next Hitler, a threat to democracy, primary spreader of fascism, and an existential danger to the nation. Do you believe that this rhetoric is behind these attempts? There's no question. In fact, the rhetoric is not is increasing the heat, not diminishing it. And if the Secret Service and the Biden administration and Homeland, Mayorkas has a lot of responsibility here, would come out and actually say, this is what we're doing to assure the safety of President Trump, of Vice President Harris, that would also create a deterrence. But as, as you're stating, this, this rhetoric calling him evil, calling him Hitler, how he's going to, to uh, he's an existential threat to democracy. Okay, that, that, that diminished for about a week after July 13th, and it came, it came roaring back, particularly during their convention. I'm getting bored of people saying, stop talking about Fox News, we don't watch Fox News. That is part of the problem. If you can't have a situation where we're highlighting the nonsense that's going on in Fox News, while well, the consequences could be pretty drastic. Take today, Monday, uh, the head of conspiracy theorist, Maria, what's her name, um, Fox, she is pushing this line, the Democrats are responsible for the assassination attempt on uh, the former president of the United States of America. Line number one, and then line number two uh, that they are pushing is that uh, ABC colluded with uh, Kamala Harris to make sure that uh, she had a favourable debate. Instead of actually concentrating on the fact that um, while Trump and J.D. Vance's rhetoric uh, perhaps has put their own uh, and security of other people definitely uh, under the microscope. And where is the evidence with regards to uh, ABC? That's like saying CNN uh, and Jake Tapper and Dana Bash gave Trump uh, an easy ride. Many people believe that. Whereas, as it turned out, President Biden didn't have a particularly good debate. He put his hand up and said that. If Trump had any level of balls or testosterone, that's Lara Luma, uh, he'd put his hand up and say he had a bad debate. That is it. The rhetoric coming out of Fox as we're, we're 50 days, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 50 days from November the 5th. This is dangerous rhetoric from Fox and has to be called out.
none of that none of that comes out fortunately we now have a whistleblower and i'm going to tell you something uh, maria we're gonna we're gonna do what we can to bring a abc uh in uh and and uh, have them answer some questions uh, and as well as have this whistleblower and see what's going on as they're trying to tear down the first amendment I'm glad you mentioned this because Fox News is reaching out to ABC for response to that affidavit and uh, this Bill Ackman post about this whistleblower. We want answers, but Bill Ackman posted this on X about an alleged ABC whistleblower affidavit that says Harris's campaign dictated the debate questions, camera angles, and the fact-checking of Trump at the debate. He writes, quote, sadly for the state of truth in media, I expect the whistleblower allegations will be deemed to be true. Ackman also pointed out that ABC News' is David Meir and Lindsey Davis have yet to make any statements on the alleged affidavit. He said, quote, if you are not guilty as alleged, you have no choice but to immediately issue a statement denying the claims for silence is an admission of complicity. ABC News has already denied allegations of collusion between the presidential debate moderators and the Harris campaign. We know Lindsey Davis is her sorority sister, but they told the Daily Beast last week, absolutely not. Harris was not given any questions before the debate. We've reached out to ABC to verify the affidavit and for a statement on these accusations, Congressman. But this affidavit and this whistleblower story is gaining traction. Uh, yes, absolutely, and, and as it should. We, we need to have, let's find out what the truth is. And the thing is this, we all saw it. We, we actually don't need a hearing to know what we saw, but we're, we're going to look to do it so as we can provide some evidence as to how manipulative they are. You know, Let me just play this for you. We're actually hearing from President Biden now for the first time speaking to reporters about this. Thank God the president's okay. I think we got a full report so far. We're down there tonight. But one thing I want to make clear, the service needs more help, and I think the Congress should respond to their needs if they, in fact, need more services. So that's what we're going to be talking about. Are you, Are you concerned? They need more money. They need more uh, personnel. They need more money. What kind of help do you say? I, I they think need? we need some more personnel. I think they may need. They may be deciding whether they need more personnel or not. Are you concerned? Are you concerned? Are you concerned? Are you concerned? As you know, there are a lot of shady characters in Trump world. Felons, bigots, conspiracy theorists, you name it. They're all at the Thanksgiving dinner table. Donald Trump invites basically anyone into the fold who's willing to tell him what he wants to hear. And yet for all the vileness circling in Trump's orbit, one name still managed to stand out above all the others this week. And if you're not familiar with Laura Loomer, you can see her there. She's a far-right activist and a self-proclaimed proud Islamophobe who is pro-white nationalism. She first gained notoriety for handcuffing herself to Twitter's headquarters in New York City in 2018 after being kicked off the platform for wildly disgusting and racist posts. Just to give you a taste of what this person is like, here she is calling for the execution of people she sees as out to get Donald Trump. I truly believe that the people who engaged in the coup against Donald Trump and have caused, you know, civil unrest and chaos in our country for the last seven years uh, through Crossfire Hurricane and also th through these uh, what I believe are illegal witch hunts against the president of the United States right now, unconstitutional witch hunts against Donald Trump, they are treasonous. They are traitors. They should get the death penalty when they are jailed in the next Trump administration. She seems nice. Laura Loomer, that's her, ladies and gentlemen. She's also said if Kamala Harris wins, quote, we are going to have an Islamic caliphate in this country. She said, if you don't vote for Donald Trump, you are an enemy of this country. And during my own book tour this week, uh, I mean, over the spring, I got a little taste of her. She encouraged her fair, far right following to come say hi. Now, I'm guessing she wasn't recommending they come and give me friendly hellos from her base of MAGA followers, of course. Honestly, all of that that I just went through is just the tip of the iceberg with Laura Loomer. And yet, this same person rode with Donald Trump on his plane to Tuesday's night's debate in Philadelphia, and the very next day, she accompanied him to events commemorating the anniversary of the September 11th attacks, which, by the way, Loomer just last year called an inside job. So yes, the former president and Republican nominee took a 9-11 truther to events commemorating 
9-11. And now, all of a sudden, Trump's closest allies are apparently super concerned about his association with racism and conspiracy theorists. Senator Lindsey Graham said, quote, the history of statements by Ms. Loomer are beyond disturbing. And in response to a racist tweet Loomer posted about Kamala Harris, Marjorie Taylor Greene wrote, quote, this is appalling and extremely racist. I mean, they're correct. It is appalling. And what she's saying is extremely racist. But forgive me for not giving these folks a profile in Courage Award. Because they do know who the leader of their own party is, right? They've met Donald Trump, you know, the guy who built his political clout on the racist birther conspiracy, the guy who just this week on the debate stage regurgitated racist lies about Haitian immigrants, the guy who surrounds himself with a cast of election deniers, anti-vaxxers, and many white nationalists. Well, here's what that guy had to say about Laura Loomer this week. What would you say to your Republican colleagues or your allies who are concerned about your close relationship with Laura Loomer? Well, I don't know uh, what they would say. I've, Laura's been a supporter of mine, just like a lot of people are supporters, and she's been a supporter of mine. She speaks very uh, positively of the campaign. I'm not sure why you asked that question, but Laura is a supporter. Uh, I don't control Laura. Laura has to say what she wants. She's a she's a free spirit. Well, I don't know. I mean, look, I can't tell Laura what to do. Laura's a supporter. I have a lot of supporters. She's a free spirit. I mean, that's one way to put it. See, Donald Trump is the conspiracy theorist in chief. And Laura Loomer didn't happen to just appear by his side. She's his kind of people. A bigoted, conspiracy addled loyalist isn't the exception in Trump's world. It's pretty much the rule. I TCH. Mm -hmm. um, and then listen to this. She's talking about several women of color, several black women, um, Letitia James um, and, and others, including Kamala Harris. Here's what she said about them. Now, you're going to elect me, and I'm going to lock him up. We're going to get Trump, like the way they talk and their little DEI Shaniqua voices. And it's just very piercing, very irritating sound. They all have the, they all have the same voice. I'm talking about Kamala Harris, uh, Letitia James, and Fannie Willis. Like all of the like meritless DEI Shaniquas talk the same way. It's very obnoxious. Why is Donald Trump hanging around with this woman? Because he's lost the plot. He's completely lost the plot. This is repellent to the, the the very voters he will need. There's no reason for this. She's disgusting. She's also a lunatic and a huge drag. And not the first drag, by the way. I think J.D. Vance is the first drag on his ticket that was a bad decision. This is uh, the next one. All right, Essie Cup, thank you.